I'm Doug DePice, I'm an art teacher. I've been teaching at Sea Caucus for 42 years. And um, we had scheduled with the Sea Caucus Public Library to have a art class for the public. And um, what happened was we had the pandemic and um, we had the social distancing and all the rules about in and out and not being together. So the class got canceled. But that doesn't mean we can't do art. So what I did is I'm going to video videotape a lesson down here in my studio for you to follow along. And it's really a simple, extremely simple lesson. And it's something that I do when uh, I don't know exactly what I want to do, but I know I want to do art. I know I want to draw, I want to create something, but I have no idea where I'm going. I don't know if I should work with trees, if I should work with uh, people or whatever. So what I do is I get a piece of paper and this table here is set up with a bunch of different things that, uh, materials that you might be familiar with, you might not. This is a pad of paper, okay? But you don't have to have a drawing pad. You could have um, paper from your computer, okay? This is a box of charcoal. This is um, lead stick. This is the lead that's inside your pencil, only there's a whole stick of lead. I like having this stuff. This is a broad, what they call magnum marker. I like these things because they make very bold, thick lines. Then you have your typical uh, normal, medium, permanent marker, Sharpie. And um, I showed you a sketchbook, but you know, people have different size sketchbooks. I mean, you can have something very small and intimate like this, and you may say, gee, I really love the size of that book. That's something I could really make lines on and really involve myself imaginatively. And I, I like that. Matter of fact, I carry one around with me. Um, this is a little book that I use, and I write my poems in it. It's just something about this. It's handmade paper, and I just like having it. Um, my daughter probably doesn't even know I carry that. I've been carrying that around for years. Okay, so there's all different kinds of things. Now, these are specialty papers right here. These are, I got these at uh, Michael's, and uh, besides having your typical white paper, you have specialty papers, and they make for interesting, um, attractive, very um, kind of celebrity-like uh, designs just by using them in your background. I'll show you how I used it later on. Okay, and uh, then you have your typical colored papers. All right, so the first thing to do is to get um, a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper, and we're going to scribble on that paper, just like you see here. These are examples of scribbling that I did. Okay, now this particular piece, I didn't pull anything out of that. In this particular sheet, I scribbled random, random marks, not knowing what I was making, just for about 30 to 60 seconds, just making lines. And then I looked for something in those lines, and I'll show you how I do that. I found the gesture of a human being almost like an entertainer. So I thought I'd just darken the line, nothing, no details, no fussiness, bang. Okay? This was a bunch of ovals, the way you learn to make ovals when you start to learn how to write. When I was in grammar school, we did penmanship. We did rows and rows of ovals. And then in those ovals, I saw eyes and the bottom part of a face. And then the rest of it, I made it as though it was this big pompadour, this hairdo on top of someone's head. And, you know, today, people are doing crazy things with their hair. So we're going to start. I'm going to stop talking. And let's get going here. So I'm going to take a piece of charcoal. I got my paper. And I don't even have to look at the paper. Actually, I can look at you, and I could just go like this and move the page, the lid around on the paper, move the paper around, take the lines, go up and down, curl it in some illogical, nothing in mind kind of way. And what I'm gonna do is when I'm done, or when I stop, because you're never really done, Okay, I'm just gonna take a look at this. I'm gonna look at it this way. And I'm gonna look for what? I'm gonna look for rhythms. I'm gonna look for something in there that looks like I can begin. Maybe a tree trunk, maybe a fish, maybe a, a lollipop, maybe a flag, whatever. Okay, so I'm looking this way. And what I like to do is when I look at these things, I squint. So I'm squinting, I'm looking. And you may be saying, gee, uh, doesn't look much. Okay, so we turn it. So we go this way. 
Okay. So I'm looking at it. I'm taking a look at the rhythms. Um, okay, I'm getting an idea. I'm going to look at it this way, position number three. Looking for some shapes. And I'm position number four. Okay, so back to position number one. Now I'm going to leave that sit there for a while. I'm going to sit with that. I'm going to show you, for the sake of time, an earlier one I did. This was a sketch I had made. And I have some papers prepared for you to see. But I want you to see how I found something in here. Okay, so the camera's going to come in. And when I put this down on the table and show you what I did. Now, one of the... Um, one of the pieces of paper that I use is an acetate sheet. So these are, these are clear plastic sheets, okay? And I'm doing that for the sake of the lesson because I want to keep this as a scribble. So I put the sheet down. Now, if you don't have something like this, and I'm assuming not everybody's going to, you could use wax paper, okay? Wax paper works beautifully. Okay, as a matter of fact, I'll use the wax paper because it's something you probably have in your house. So I'll take some wax paper out for you to see. Okay. I'll put it on top of that. It's almost transparent. It's very translucent. Okay. Now I'm going to take my marker. Okay. And I see something here. So I see this, this rhythm here reminds me of the shape of an eye. Okay? This rhythm here reminds me of the upper lid, and this reminds me of an eyebrow. Okay, there's a gesture here. What if I make that the nose? Oh my goodness, take a look at that. This, the upper lip, the shadow underneath the lower lip, and this line for the chin. Just like that. Okay? And I'll, I could thicken that up. This is all right. You can do whatever you want. Okay, now I see a line here. You can see that line. Oh, that's the side of the neck. And over here, I'm beginning to see curves. Well, hair does funny things. I'm following those rhythms. And I've made a face. Now, I can leave the eye empty or... I can put the eye, I can put an eye in. Okay? Picasso esque. All right. Now, I can take that off and say, whoa, well, that looks interesting. So that's a design. Now, you may say, well, Big deal. What's that? That doesn't look like much. But if I use my specialty papers, this becomes really interesting because now I can take the artwork, put it on top of the specialty papers, and with a frame from Michaels, I suddenly get an interesting composition. I get textures. I get, I get glare. I get... It's almost like a party going on there. That's what wax paper. Now I did the same thing using the acetate and you can see how much more glossy and commercial it looks. And just, just take a look at that. Generally you don't put everything in the middle of your picture because it's like making target art. But if I was to put it off to the side, to the right or to the left and on a slight angle, well that's interesting. Now. Anybody can do this, and you're making art. You're making art because you're working with color, you're working with form, you're working with line. It's very expressive, it's very free, and it's very much like, it's very Matisse-like. It's a combination, in this project, with these specialty papers, this is a combination of Matisse and, I'd say, Andy Warhol. So you could take any piece of paper, scribble on it, and this particular paper, right right here, if you're looking at it, you go, you don't see anything. But what I saw on that page was a bunch of leaves from plants. So if I take this and I put it back on top, take a look at that, the way that whole thing just comes together. Do you see the lines? Do you see the lines of the petals, the leaf petals, the leaf petals, the flower here? 
the flower up here. Take a look at that. Okay, and then I could color that. I could thicken that. I could make all kinds of changes to it. I can take my, my marker and I can make some things bold. I'll do that now for you. Wow, take a look at that. Now we're going somewhere. Now we're making art. Take a look at this. can't wait till my granddaughter could do this kind of stuff. Okay, so this is what we have. This is another leaf down here. You can darken them in. You can make it a black and white composition. You could make it color. You can use papers. Put that on top. Let's see. What, we, what if we were to combine the design ideas from number two with the design ideas from number one? Okay. And we can put them together in a frame, and it's almost like man and nature. How interesting. Now, if you saw the paper cutouts of, that really looks good. If you saw the paper cutouts of Matisse in his later stages of life, he did things that were very, what they call, biomorphic, very freeform. And they looked part aquatic, they looked part like they belonged in the ocean, and they looked part plant-like. So this has that kind of freedom. It has that, that rhythm, that lack of uh, academia, so to speak. It's, it's, very, it's very spontaneous. It's very imaginative. And um, I think it's exciting. So um, I would suggest that you try some of this. Just make scribbles. Look for the rhythms. Turn your paper around. Start pulling lines out that may look like something, a ladybug or a table, a chair, whatever you see. And... And then begin to make bold outlines or color it and take pictures of what you do. And if you are comfortable enough, share it with the public library. Go online, see Caucus Public Library, look up their website and email a picture of your art to them. And it'll be like we're having a virtual class. Okay, so we plan on trying to do this uh, kind of regularly. I'll have different lessons. I'll keep them really simple since we have this distancing. And... Uh, I think you should have a ball. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. What do you think?